Zach's Screen of the Week, an overview of a timely stock screening strategy aimed at helping you produce more profitable investing results. Well, now our top stock screener, Kevin Matris, is going to show us how to screen for your stock's earnings yield. He joins me now from Zacks.com. We've talked about this before. Yes, we have. Before we get to that, you know, with the market at new highs, right. the way it is right now as we sit here and speak, late November, everybody seems to be obsessed with overvalued, undervalued. Where Nonsense. do you stand in that conversation? You know, it is funny. The, uh, the market is at all-time highs, but and everybody should be rejoicing. But I think the pullback that we had just seen last month is so fresh in everybody's mind, people are kind of on edge. Mm -hmm. So it's both exciting, but also kind of nerve-wracking all at the same time. So people are naturally trying to figure out, is the market overvalued or is the market undervalued? And a lot of people are turning to the P-E ratio to try to figure that very thing out. But for me, I think the best thing to use is the earnings yield. That's kind of what I've been focused on lately, and I think that's the best way to gauge it. All right. What is it? For those who maybe didn't hear us or watch us the last time we talked yeah, about this. As a matter of fact, we talked about this on the webinar that we did. I think it was like maybe a couple of months ago. Oh. But, uh, but anyways, the earnings yield is just that. It measures the anticipated yield or the return that you should be able to make on a stock. Mm -hmm. And the calculation is the inverse of the P-E ratio. So let's first go through the P-E ratio just okay. to be able to make sure everybody's totally understanding this. Good so, idea. So the P-E ratio is price divided by earnings. And the calculation is pretty simple. If let's say the price was $35 and earnings were $3, that means the P-E ratio is 11.67 which means it's selling at 11.67 times earnings. Another way of looking at it is that you're paying $11.67 for $1 of earnings, okay? When you're looking at the earnings yield, once again, that's the flip side of that. So the calculation is uh, reversed. It's earnings divided by price. So using the same example, if let's say a stock with $3 of earnings trading at $35, right, 3 divided by 35, mm -hmm. that has an earnings yield of 0.0857 or 8.57%. So the earnings yield is also expressed as the EP ratio, but a yield of 8.57% also means 8.57 cents of earnings for every $1 investment. How's that? Sounds good. So how does one go and use this now? Well, the, the most common way somebody will use the earnings yield is they will compare it to other stocks, but they're also going to want to compare it to the 10-year treasury. And conventional wisdom says that if the yield on the stock market is lower than the yield on the 10-year T-bill, then stocks would be considered overvalued. If, however, the yield on the stock market is above the 10-year T-bill, well, then stocks would be considered undervalued. The whole idea that people have to wrap their mind around is, is this theory that both bonds and stocks are competing for investor dollars. Mm -hmm. So in order to attract investor interest on stocks, you have to have a higher yield to compensate for the additional risk that person is taking when you compare it to the virtual risk-free investment that you have when you're doing U.S.-backed securities. So you always want to take a look at the relationship between the earnings yield on stocks and the yield that you see on the 10-year Treasury. Now, if earnings go up, then the yield is going to go up. If earnings go down, then you're going to see the yield go down. However, though, price is also a component as well, and price is going to affect the, the yield, but inversely. So if the prices go up, the yield goes down, okay. and vice versa. So ideally, as you see the price of stocks go up, you also want and need to see the earnings go up in order to keep that relationship of a higher earnings yield on stocks in comparison to other assets with a yield. All right. 
Am I correct? Some people also use this to forecast the downturn of the market uh, in 07, beginning yeah, in 07? Very successfully. And again, you can go back to all of the different market turns and you can see that very interesting relationship between the earnings yield on stocks and the earnings yield with the 10 year. But yeah, if you were to look in, in June of 2007, you'll see that the yield on the 10 year T bill was 4.95%. If you look at the earnings yield on the S&P back then, it was 4.19%. So there was no premium to invest in a risk-based investment like stocks. And by the end of the year, you started to see the market go down, and then that turned into the great you know, recession that we just recovered from. If you were to look at March of 2009, that's when we really saw this bull market begin. And if you take a look at the earnings yield of the S&P back then, back then it was 9.51% and the earning on the 10-year T-bill was 2.89. So you had this fantastic earnings yield just you know, inviting people to buy stocks. And we ultimately started one of the biggest bull runs we've seen in history, and it's still going. So everybody's wondering, are we overvalued? Are we undervalued? Is yeah. this, you know, are we going to see this market go down from here? I would say take a look at the earnings yield. And currently right now, the earnings yield on the S&P using the forward 12 months, the earnings yield is 6.03%, and the earnings yield on the 10-year Treasury is 2.3%. So clearly, in my opinion, stocks are the better investment, and I don't believe stocks are overvalued by any stretch. I would even say, based on this metric, that uh, stocks are undervalued, and I think it's a, it's a great yield if you're willing to assume a little bit of risk. All right, then run down the screen for us. Set it up. Yeah, it's pretty simple stuff. Uh, we're starting off with the usual. I like to find stocks that are trading at $5 or higher. I want the average volume to be 100,000 shares or greater. For this, I want the earnings yield to be greater than or equals to 7%. Again, we just got done saying that the earnings yield on the broader stock market is a little bit over 6. I want this to be a little bit better, so we're saying greater than 7. Okay. And again, you have the, uh, the uh, calculation right there. Right. The 12-month projected growth rate has to be greater than the S&P 500, and I want all of those stocks to have a Zax rank of 2 or better, 1 or a 2. All right. How many stocks came through? There were 63 when I ran it this morning. A lot of fantastic stocks. Here are five of them that jumped out at me. Cooper Tire, and you can see they have a 9.5% earnings yield. Hawaiian Holdings, 9.46. Milan, 7.2. NetEase, 11.89. That's a pretty big one. And then Cynix, 9.21%. All of these stocks have great fundamentals. They have a wonderful Zacks rank, but the earnings yield, very attractive for the, for the risk that you have to take. But do you own any? You know, it's funny. I ran it. I didn't expect to, uh, to pick one of my stocks. But when I did, they jumped out at me for a reason. I do have Mylon right now. Okay. All right. Well, thanks for stopping by. Mm -hmm. Show us another one of your famous stock screens. And you... I'll wear a suit coat next time. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> you can uh, read the text version of this particular screen of the week on our website. If you're watching this out in syndication, just get on over to Zacks.com's homepage and link to it right from the homepage. And as always, if you want to know more about the Research Wizard, that is the dynamic tool that Kevin uses to achieve all of these screens, then Zacks.com slash Research Wizard is the place to visit on your computer, on the internet. With Kevin Matris and the Screen of the Week, I'm Terry Ruffalo.